Hey everybody, it's Carpo. I made a video the other night about uh, the elements, and uh, during that video I was talking about how the body absorbs different elements and utilizes it for various properties. And uh, it got me in kind of a rabbit hole here. <laughs> um, you know, I've always been fascinated with the archetypes of the planets in conjunction with our chakras or our organs, all the fractals of our body and in space. And I've talked with people about this a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to look a little bit further into this whole idea that, uh, that there's a um, kind of a deeper understand, deeper meaning behind um, Lucifer. The whole idea of Lucifer, which is the light bearer or light bringer. And this has been something that's on the top of it. The reason why this ties in is because, I, speaking about phosphorus, now phosphorus is fascinating to me. Now, phosphorus. Phos and phoros are two separate words that mean light bearer. And I think that that's fascinating in, my, in its own right, of course. But phosphorus in the body, in the human body, um, well, let's just take phosphorus, for example, in its raw form. Phosphorus is a metal. It's a soft metal. And when you drop it in water, it reacts violently and creates a strong chemical reaction, like a fire. Um, when exposed to air, it glows. And this is why it brings this, you know, light bringer uh, name to it. So phosphorus is utilized by the human body in possibly the same way. Um, maybe very subtle energies going on, um, you know, chemical processes that allow our bodies to exist, right? Um, but the idea is phosphorus is actually, I believe it was, well, Latin, well, okay. First off, okay, we've got one gram of phosphorus in the human body, is what they say. And uh, who knows what, we, or, sorry, that's excu excreted by the human body every day. And in the old days, that they'd found out that, uh, I think in the 14-1500s, that they would take piss, literally urine, human urine, and dry it out, and uh, process it, and they'd use it for magic to show people the phosphorus glow within the urine. Um, now, the reason why this is so fascinating is because phosphorus and Venus are, phosphorus, Venus, and Lucifer are basically the same, the same thing. Now, Venus was always thought of as Lucifer, and those who are involved in, you know, symbology and stuff know this. It's, um, the whole idea that, that Lucifer, okay, now this is where I've been, this is the conclusions that I've been starting to unfold over the years, is that, uh, first off, there was no, there was no Lucifer in the Bible, because Lucifer is a Latin word, and the word came much, much later after the Bible was written in Hebrew. Um, nor was there any mention of it in the Bible, except in a way that if you look at the passage itself, it's pretty interesting. But um, there's the idea that uh, Lucifer or Satan, well, Satan was just a word made up. There is no hell. Those of us in adulthood realize there is no hell, that Lucifer and Satan are two different ideas. The Luciferians have always had problems because, uh, you know, those accuse them of being against God and whatnot. The interesting thing is that Lucifer means the morning star. And Venus is morning star. But Jesus also said he was the morning star. So therefore, Jesus is Lucifer. Now, this has led people to all kinds of debates throughout history. But I'm not involved in the religious side of it. Because you could argue that all day long and nobody's ever going to prove their point. What I want to know is why phosphorus, Venus, the morning star are all so important with each other. And here's what I've come to the conclusion so far is the idea that Venus, if it's Lucifer, now Venus is on the horizon much of the year, and then it falls below the horizon. It never quite gets up high enough. And it is the brightest thing in the sky besides the sun and the moon, brighter than any of the other planets. And so the idea that it's a fallen angel that Lucifer, or Venus, is a fallen angel is the idea that it can never quite attain the height, that it has fallen to the horizon, right? So, 
you know, this isn't new. This is <laughs> this isn't you know the, these are conclusions that people have come up with uh, many times over, I'm sure. Um, but there's only so much research one can do into this before he has to kind of find out for himself. So you search each one of the planets and the meaning, and and, and uh, you start to understand the idea of Venus, and that makes total sense as not being Lucifer as a fallen angel from heaven, literally, but a fallen star from the heavens. And um, in that sense, the fact that it glows and the phosphorus, I want to know how that correlates with the human body and what we utilize the phosphorus for, if that's just the Venus within us. And, and I do believe in this stuff. I mean, it's, it's very... Um, yeah, I, I believe all the ancient texts as well as the Bible are written in code. Uh, to an extent, although mistranslated and many times, oh, you know, overwritten, and uh, books mixed up and books taken out, but the idea behind many religious texts is that there is something, something deeper, but it has to be put in code because it's not able to be put into an understandable format, and that's that's what the whole idea behind this is, the whole, you know, astro, astro theology, I guess, but, um, anyway, that's, uh, so that's what I've come up with, the phosphorus glow, it's, uh, it's some pretty cool stuff, I want to tie in this whole periodic table of the elements and start, uh, I'm starting to pick apart each element and figure out the root meaning and the root uh, you know, the root of each word, the root of each element, and find out exactly how it correlates. Because most of them are just pretty mundane, you know, they're named after the scientists that discovered them. But some of them go back to ancient times, and they're based on, like, Mercury. And, uh, anyway, there's a lot more to be done. So, keep at it. Salt of the earth, salt of the earth.